So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera. So, our presentation topic is about specialized physical testing. So, what is a physical testing? A physical testing is a qualitative or quantitative procedure that consists of determinations of one or more characteristics of a given product process or service according to a specified procedure. Often this is a part of an experiment. So, physical testing might have a variety of purpose such as the requirements of a specifications, regulations, or contract are met. Decide if a new product development program is on track. For example, demonstrate proof of concept also demonstrate the utility of a purpose patent patent and then provide standard data for other scientific engineering and the quality insurance functions also physical testing also valid uh, for valid validate suitability for end use also the purpose is Provide a basis for the technical communications. Provide a technical means of comparison of several options. And also provide evidence in illegal proceedings. So, the first physical testing is the hardness measurement. The example of hardness measurement is the Rockwell hardness test. Rockwell is a fast hardness test method developed for production control with a direct redoubt mainly used for metallic materials. The Rockwell hardness is calculated by measuring the depth of an indent after an indenter has been forced into the specimen material at a given load. So hard, the Rockwell hardness test has three steps The first one is the indenter is pressed with the test pre-force to a penetration depth of H node in the specimen to be tested. So basically, H node defines the reference level for subsequent measurements of the residual indentation depth, which is H. The second step is the additional test force is applied for a dwell period defined in accordance with, with the standard whereby the indenter penetrates into the specimen to a maximum indentation depth of H1. The test pre-force plus the additional test force give the total test force. And then the final step is the additional test force is removed. The indenter moved up by the elastic proportion of the penetration depth in the total test force and remains at the level of the residual indentation depth. This is also referred to as the depth differential. So now the Rockwell hardness can be calculated using the residual indentation depth H and a formula defined in the standard taking account of the applied Rockwell skill. So now I will explain about the heat deflection. The heat deflection or heat distortion temperature is the temperature at which a polymer or plastic sample deform under a specific load. This property of a given plastic material is applied in many aspects of product design, engineering and manufacture of product using thermoplastic component. The heat deflection is applied in injection molding. 
and injection molded plastic pipe is considered safe to remove from it mold once it is near or below the HDT. This means that the pipe deformation will be held within a suitable limit after removal. The molding of plastic by necessity occur at high temperature due to the low viscosity of plastic in fluid form. Once plastic is in the mold, it must be cooled to a temperature to which little or no dimensional change will occur after removal. In general, plastic do not conduct heat well and so will take quite a while to cool to room temperature. One way to like it, this is to use a cool mold. Even so, the cooling of the pipe to room temperature can limit the mass production of pipe. Choosing a resin with a higher heat deflection temperature can allow manufacturer to achieve a much faster molding process that they will otherwise while maintaining dimensional change within certain limit. Table abrasion is a test to determine a plastic resistance to abrasion. Resistance to abrasion is defined as the ability of a material to withstand mechanical action such as rubbing, scrapping, or erosion. Abrasion can be difficult to compare but his variation or wet loss are often evaluated. Test procedure of table abrasion is the haze or original way of test specimen is measured. The test specimen is then placed on the abrasion tester. A 250, 500 or 1000 gram load is placed on top of the abrader wheel and allowed to spin for a specific number of revolution. Different abrading wheels are specific. A haze measurement of final weight is taken. The load of wheel can be adjusted for softer and harder material. For my part, I will talk about the density column. The density of plastic varies significantly from one sample to one sample. It is due to its unique character of the polymer that partially crystallizes in the solid state, yielding a different degree of crystallinity and consequently different density. The degree of crystallinity is the one that regulates the crucial mechanical properties of polymeric materials. The density carrier columns can be used to determine the density of solid sample, which are too small to be measured by kinometry or hydrostatic veins such as polymetric materials or plastics. The density gradient column is normally made in a glass tube between 750 and 1500 mm long and 35 to 60 mm diameter. It is more theoretically in a water bath and held at a constant temperature. The gradient is filled by mixing two miscible liquids in constantly varying proportion, such as column is properties as the column is filled. Also, gradient has been performed calibration that are lower into the column that will slowly sting each other. Each is liquid of its own density. This allows the relationship for height of the column again density to be determined. Thus, the density create, density of the material can be determined from this. So, we're moving on to the thermal conductivity equipment. Thermal conductivity refers to a material's ability to conduct heat. The two types of thermal conductivity meter are steady state and non-steady state also called transient conductivity meters. The following equipments are the thermal conductivity equipment that can be used to measure the thermal conductivity. For the first equipment, it is the HFM 100 heat flow meter. It is an easy to use rapid technique for thermal conductivity measurement and thermal resistant measurement of, inst of insulation products. One of the capability of heat flow meter is it has two flux sensors for accurate measurement of thermal conductivity. It is is also have Peltier heating or cooling plates for rapid control of temperature and it's follow the international standards ASTMC 518 ISO 8301 and EN 12667 
HFM 100 flow meet, heat flow meter instrument is also a cost effective instrument. Moving on to the next equipment, it is the transient hot wire liquid thermal conductivity meter. It is an advanced measurement system for direct determination of the thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity, and specific heat instrument for measurement of liquids and pastures in accordance with ASTM D7896-19. The THWL1 utilizes a non-stationary measurement approach and rapid test times to limit convective effects for samples with a wide range of viscosities. For the third equipment, it is the DSC L600 differential scanning calorimeter. It is a powerful thermal analyzer that measures the energy absorbed or released as a function of time or a control temperature profile. The sensor of the DSCL600 is the heat flux plate, which is designed to give superior performance and rock reliability. The heat flux plate is capable of measuring small energy changes over the entire temperature range. The specially designed heat flux plate also has demonstrated more than twice the sensitivity than other heat flow type DSCs on the market. The reproductibility is excellent and the noise level is virtually unnoticeable due to a precision high gain and low noise differential amplifier. The fourth equipment, it is a transient line source TLS-100. It is a portable meter used to measure thermal conductivity and thermal resistivity of a variety of samples, including soil, rocks, concrete, and polymers. Tests can be performed with the push of a button, and results are displayed instantly. The transient line source meter follows ASTM D5334-14, the slope from plot of temperature, temperature rise versus logarithm of time is used in the calculation of thermal conductivity. The higher the thermal conductivity of a sample, the lower the slope. For samples of low thermal conductivity, the slope will be higher. For the last equipment, it is the thermogravimetric analyzer TGA 1000/1500. It's a thermal analysis instrument that measures weight changes as a function of temperature or time. The system allows for multiple heating, cooling, and isothermal segments to be linked together to achieve a complex profile. Automatic gas switching is also supported during the temperature program. The vertical hangdown designs offer stable and smooth weight readings to be recorded during the experiment. The TGS small furnace responds quickly to changes in the temperature profile and cools down quickly for fast turnaround between experiments. Coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction can be divided into two, two different types, and that is static and kinetic. Static represents the stationary object, while the kinetic represents an object that starts to move. First step is to place the sample film on the horizontal plane till it stays stationary. The next step is to put the sled placed on the sample with string attached to it and the string has to be tightened. And the final step is to configure the controller by inserting the variables in the controller for example of the weight of the sample and the weight of the sled.
the last but not least, we are going to understand what is weaker software mind tester. Uh, this tester is to determine the softening point and this is important because certain materials such as plastic doesn't have a definite melting point. The weaker softening temperature is temperature at which the flat ended needle penetrates into the specimen at the depth of 1 mm under a specific load and the temperature reflects the point of the softening as the temperature will be elevated little by little. There are various standards toward the procedure. This procedure, the penetrating needle is rested on the surface of the specimen at least 1 mm away from the edge. A lot of 10 newton or 15 newton depend on the standard is applied to the specimen and then the specimen with the needle is lowered into the oil bath so that it has a constant elevating temperature. Then the oil bath is raised at 50 degree or under 20 degree Celsius per hour.